Hello, Danny. Hi, Mark. Nice to see you. You're looking amazing. Good to see you again. Yes, this uh, this uh, hundred degree uh, weather in Austin just is uh, does something for my complexion. I'm not sure. You know. Oh wow! Oh wow! Right. Yes, I think we had 107 yesterday. It was the record was last year 109. So uh, just wow. uh, move, moving from Colorado to uh, Austin has taken. It's been uh, just you know getting used to this. It's uh, it's a it's a different thing. This this uh, level of heat. That's a tough one, huh? Yeah. Which, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's more of an inconvenience, I guess. You know, than than uh, anything else. But we've got a lot of water and swimming pools and so forth. So we to, yeah. and you learn you learn you learn when to go outside and when to stay inside. And right, uh, right. So you go out right. before eleven a.m. and then if you're going to be outside, and then other than that, you try and stay in air conditioning. Right, that's true. <laughs> you can just go directly to the to the river. See a lot of people right. there, right? Right. Oh so, yes, uh, no, no, I yes. I I I uh, look out. Uh, uh, my window looks out over Lady Bird Lake, and there's always all kinds of people out there uh, kayaking and canoeing and paddleboarding, and um, you know, and they're on the water. That's for sure. That's great. That's great. Yeah. So how's uh, how's the uh, summer been in Germany? Uh, it's been very hot, actually. Previously, like um, we are, we were also. Let me see, how much was it? It was like 40 Celsius in Fahrenheit, 104 to 110 was really hot, but wow. it's cooling down now, like 70, 70 to oh, 80. Oh, that's nice. Which Good. Is bad, which is nice. Never Enjoyable. think of Germany of getting that warm. Yeah, it do sometimes though, for several weeks, but then it cools down again. Hopefully, yes. thankfully. thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, we got... Uh, Looks like about one more minute till showtime, and we'll give uh, time for some more people to uh, uh, get on board here. Um, sure. To attend here. Good. I think everybody can uh, catch up with us as they uh, uh, jump on here. Um, so let's uh, we'll, we'll, so, so we're not wasting everybody's time. We'll, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to uh, um, be leading this, and this is uh, not going to. I'm going to try and get through this. Uh, hopefully, won't even take an hour um, to, to go through what I've got to share with you, and um, and to have. Um, uh, Donnie talked to you about uh, his his product, uh, Balcor. But uh, so it's uh, myself, Mark Mitchell uh, from Wizard Strategy, and uh, Donnie uh, Santosa from uh, Balcor. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be going through things and then turning things over to Donnie uh, later on in the presentation. If you've got any questions or something, please just uh, type them in the chat box and uh, I'll try to keep an eye on that and, and we'll try to answer as your questions as best that we can. Now, my plan today is to not do this as a uh, PowerPoint with all kinds of charts and graphs and so forth. Uh, although I do have a few props. Um, I think this is something I could just speak to the issue and I think it will be um, uh, hopefully clear to you. And, uh, and I think that you'll agree with most of what I have to say. Uh, about CRMs, and I guess I was thinking about there's this comedian Lewis Black that I, I love. He just always gets so uh, he gets in a, a race, he starts he does these rants about something, you know. And I think I, today I want to rant about CRM. <laughs> uh, so I've been, you know, in building materials for uh, over 40 years, and my whole thing is I'm always looking for uh, what's going on in building material sales and marketing. Uh, what could be going better? Where's a where's there a problem, a bottleneck, or something? Whenever I see something, I'm kind of drawn to that. And so, so years ago, um, along comes uh, this concept of CRM and Salesforce, and uh, boy, it sure seems like a wonderful thing. 
and companies start signing up for it. And, um, and yet I'm not seeing companies uh, necessarily happy with it. Um, so I thought over time, well, that'll probably work itself out. But I recently uh, did a survey um, just with building material companies, and they came back and told me uh, overall that they're they're not satisfied with the results they get with their CRM. And there's two primary reasons. One, CRM is too complicated. And number two is their salespeople don't um, love it. Uh, don't, don't, uh, don't really support it. They, they use it because they're, it's a condition of their employment, if you will, like you have to do this as opposed to the salesperson seems like, wow, I can't imagine doing life without my CRM. Now there are a couple of companies that I have found who have somehow put the things together correctly. Okay. Um, and those companies, I'm just saying that because their salespeople said to me, Mark, literally, like, I can't imagine doing my job without our CRM. And um, if I left this company and went to look at it for a new job, I would seriously be uh, looking at what CRM that company would have. Because if they didn't have a good system set up, then I would not want to waste my time as a salesperson working for them. So it shows to me that the CRM can work, okay? They're just uh, not working today, if you will. Um, and another survey I recently did is I was at the AIA show a few weeks ago. And of uh, 127 companies that I talked to there, um, I found that 77% of them are using a, a CRM. Um, and that 38% of those use Salesforce, the rest use another type of C CRM. And um, they, the ones that didn't use a CRM, um, uh, one, uh, they were very small companies, maybe like there's like one salesperson. Uh, number two, they sell through independent reps who are not going to probably use their CRM system anyway. So, I, so that, that, I guess the 77% adoption rate, I guess it made sense to me. I would have thought Salesforce was a little higher than 38%, but it is what it is. Now, um, what I found is that um, uh, part of this is CRMs are, are powerful. Uh, literally, I think they're, um, you know, they're, they're going to be an essential part of our business going forward. Uh, but like with many things, the building material industry is just a little bit behind the rest of the world. So we were slow to adopt, like, what's this thing called the internet? What's, what's a website? What's digital marketing? So forth. Compared to other industries, the building materials industry has always been just a little bit behind. So along comes this uh, new high-tech uh, program called C uh, CRM. And we're not really familiar with necessarily how, how, how to use it well. And uh, so, and I think, so that, so there, there was one problem. So then I think the second problem is we assumed like, wow, just sign up here and your sales will start to go up. We assumed that, uh, you know, this would be pretty easy. Just turn it on, send it, you know, start making your payments, uh, sign an agreement, whatever. But um, we didn't realize how much uh, upfront work would require, be required to set it up correctly. And, and, we didn't, and we weren't knowledgeable how to do that, like how to go from a Rolodex to an Excel spreadsheet to, a, to whatever we were using at the time to a CRM. And uh, we weren't really equipped with how to do that. And so we got signed up for a CRM, big complicated program requires a different type of thinking, but we went ahead. Um, signed up thinking that, well, I, I, I got Salesforce, so my sales are, should be up right now, right? No, they, 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 that didn't happen. Um, and so 
So, so then it was like a, well, the sales force is resisting it. That's the problem. Salesforce, if the sales force would just use this darn thing, it would work. Okay. And, um, and, uh, that that really wasn't the case. But so what they said was, well, you must you I don't care if you like this or not, you must do it. If you want to work here, you have to do this. So the salespeople were, okay, I'll do it. Right. Um, and I think the thought was, gee, if we just if we just have them do it long enough, eventually they'll come to love it. Okay. Well, you know, it's been for some companies years and the salespeople still don't love it, don't appreciate it, don't understand it. And so, um, and so that's, that's, I think the, the two biggest things there are that it's, uh, you know, it's, it's too complicated uh, and the sales force doesn't embrace it as much as they should. Okay. Uh, ideally, the sales, the sales team should look at your CRM and go, I like, I can't imagine, you know, uh, doing business without it. And, um, so, so what I think what I found is that this kind of boiled down to uh, two problems. One problem is that was not set up correctly in the beginning. Most CRMs uh, were not set up correctly. They're too complicated. You can, it's almost like you just needed, uh, on one hand, you need something simple but on the other hand, we have a complicated sales process in building materials. So you need something that could, that could understand that, right? And the uh, CRMs originally were set up more for more simple transactions, like Mrs. Smith needs a new roof, uh, as opposed to um, this, uh, this big contractor does, you know, uh, a thousand roofs a year and we it's not selling our products uh, and so or or a big commercial project or something so they were not they're not set up correctly um and the second one is that they um and in the setup i think the other problem that we found was that because the crm could measure all kinds of things all of a sudden people started to go, oh, yeah, we'd like to know just how much time the sales rep spends each week doing this or doing that. or And all of a sudden, the sales rep is like, okay, I'm having to spend my time to report on activities versus getting help with results. And so it's kind of like Big Brother looking over my shoulder they're not trust me that I know what I'm doing. Not trust me that I'm a good salesperson. I have to I spend time filling out reports. I'm not sure anybody will ever read or will actually do anything. And so, uh, so we started to I think lose sight of this is a, this is to help you grow your sales, and it started to become more of a management tool as opposed to staying singularly focused on growing sales. And the second part is it's, uh, uh, so number one is um, uh, not set up properly. So what your current CRM is doing for you, I don't think is, uh, if you're not pleased with the results, is it was not set up correctly in the beginning. Uh, the second one is, um, is that it wastes time, okay? And, um, you know, so like I, I got my, my little prop here, my, my one little prop, I belong to a bunch of sizes, time, 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 okay? Keep in mind, you know, we have today fewer sales reps. We're not adding sales reps, okay? Most companies, at least, are not adding sales reps. They're figuring out how can I get, how can I get the sales reps I have to cover, do more, cover more, okay? And the most value, so the most valuable asset your salespeople have is time. And so, so that if they're spending time filling out um, reports that don't really help, um, that's a waste of time. Um, a bigger waste of time is that they are perhaps calling on the wrong people at the wrong time. Uh, so is the CRM really helping them 
uh, uh, using data to help them and, and to advise them about what call to make. Okay. Um, so what I find is that um, the, uh, the, uh, the other problem with most CRMs today is that the, uh, the, 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 a lot of the end result is still left in the hands of sales leadership or the individual sales rep. So in the case of sales leadership, sales leadership can um, decide, for example, if you were commercial roofing and you see that the uh, McCormick Place uh, Convention Center in Chicago is going to get a new roof, okay? Well, sales leadership can say, oh, we have to get that job, okay? All right? And, and, and for many companies, that, that's a total waste of time, okay? One is all your competitors are going after that same job. Um, so you're going to take your best sales team and, and salespeople and resources and devote it to trying to land this big prestigious project. But um, the, the general contractor knows this, uh, how desirable this project is. And so the person that ends up getting that project um, is going to, you know, be lucky if they make any profit, okay? Um, because they're going to just play one off against the other on something like that. So it may be wiser to walk away, but there are, so, so there's still these times when the, the uh, uh, sales leadership is taking their own personal opinion about what to go after, um, uh, just just a little uh, another another example of wasted sales time, or at least to me was I remember I was working. Uh, I was um, I worked in the past with both Owens Corning and with Dow, and um, and so uh, Dow uh, um, building material division is you know just little little what was it one sixtieth of their business or something like that. Um, so it wasn't in the headquarters that had its own office out on the, let's say, outsides of Midland, Michigan. And uh, to, you drove down this uh, two-lane road to get to that office of the build and material area. And on the way down that road, a developer decided to build a small, small multifamily um, complex. And, and he was uh, using... Uh, Pink Owens Corning fiberglass foamular foam. Well, you know the you know the sales leader went nuts and said, "Well, that can't be," and you know make the local salesperson stop what they were doing and go and and switch that job. <laughs> I mean, the Owens Corning products already on the job site, so you can imagine it's not only giving me a good price, but you're going to pay me. You know, so it was one. I just thought, wow, how much of that salesperson's time did it take? you know, for, to, to lose some money. Um, uh, uh, within a year of that example, similar thing happened. Oh, it's Corning. There's a new stadium being built in downtown Toledo. And um, all of a sudden there on the, it, you had drive by the stadium job site on the way to Owens Corning. And there is uh, uh, all this blue styrofoam, blue foam. And the, you know, sales leader of Owens Corning. It's like, we can't have this. We can't have this. <laughs> and same thing. So those are just examples of where sales leaders will get involved from their opinion versus relying on data to what's the best use of their salespeople's time. Salespeople, on the other hand, will also um, tend to want to call on, they spend too much time with their current customers. And perhaps we'll say even their current first customers, like the distributor. So they'll spend time with a distributor um, and, and they're kind of babysitting business that they already were going to get anyway. As it, like when I interview distributors, there are many times like, Mark, you know, uh, we love it when Joe, the salesperson, stops by. He's a great guy. But, you know, we, we, he would help both of us out more if he was out in the field calling on contractors or builders or architects or somebody to bring more business into both of us. Right. But at the sales, you know, that you, you handle, you, you face a little rejection there. It's not as much of a sure thing. Um, and so 
So both the salespeople and the sales leaders to me uh, make can make poor judgments because they're basing on their on the opinions versus the data okay, of, of where they really should be spending their time. And that's another part of it is we have a very complicated sale and particularly in commercial. Um, so we've got an architect, we've got a general contractor, we've got a distributor, we've got an installing contractor, um, perhaps we have an engineer, um, you know, the, the, the owner, just all of these different players in, in there. And each one of them can, we work really hard to get to that specification. And then all of a sudden, just to see it undone. And if the right person isn't called on at the right time, then you've got a problem. And, uh, and so, uh, and many times I find like we're, we're just uh, saying, oh, I didn't realize I should talk to the distributor about this or something. And because uh, we're so focused on getting more specifications, get more specifications or something uh, simplistic like that. And so, you know, so that's what I, I see um, wherever your CRM is right now, um, um, you know, even if it's, if it's one of those ones that's doing really well, it could do better. Um, if it's not doing better, um, I think you got a couple of choices. One is to kind of, unfortunately, step back and rethink your whole CRM system and perhaps bring in somebody like the Hunley Group, who's good at helping companies set up Salesforce and building materials. Um, if, if you didn't have someone to, uh, guide, a consulting firm to guide you putting that together, that may be something. Um, but last fall, I met Donnie from Balcor, and he uh, uh, came to my wizard summit in Boulder, and I... Uh, uh, was telling him about his product, and I tend to be skeptical of people. I'm like, okay, Donnie, all right, so you've got this app for CRMs and building materials. That's great. I have a lot of people these days that have apps and software and things that they've developed, and I'm always skeptical about, okay, tell me how, how do you know what you're doing? I have no doubt you know how to make a computer do things, but how do you know this about this crazy business. And so, so Donnie told me that he had, uh, his firm originally was brought in on CRM issues for building material companies in Germany, where they have an issue with their CRM. And so they would provide a, uh, call, a custom solution for that, that particular building material company. But after doing this several times, they started to see a commonality of uh, this, they're all having the same problem. And so that led Donnie to develop this product called Balcor. So, okay, okay, I'm, I'm, that, that sounds like uh, you know what you're doing. Um, and then the further proof was I uh, uh, asked Donnie, like, you know, tell me about who's using it today. And so Donnie said it uh, has over 30 companies in Germany that are using Balcor today um, and are very... Uh, from what I've heard from them, they're all very happy with it. And it's really made a difference in how their CRMs work for them. And so that, that I thought for, uh, uh, for some, particularly one for commercial building material companies, um, um, I see where Balcor works really well, where the more data you have, the better it can work for you. And I think in, in uh, commercial sales, you have more data than in residential so I thought, gee, you know, I'd like to introduce uh, Balcor at, to, you know, the building material companies and the uh, commercial building material companies and, and, uh, and let them see if this might, might fix their problem, uh, get, get their CRM to finally be paying off. Uh, so Donnie, did I, did I, have I said that correctly so far? Exactly right, Mark, <laughs> 100%. Well, good. Why don't you take a minute and just uh, run run us through what uh, Balcor is and how it works? Sure, happy to do that. And by the way, you mentioned earlier that you know people using Salesforce are not like you know not setting up correctly and this kind of thing. But I would say actually, Mark is not only for Salesforce. So CRM in general doesn't matter which you know provider you are using. Um, they are built for direct sales, right? So where you start to build your leads and then try to convert them to a 
to prospect, you create an opportunity, and then hopefully the lead will become a customer, right? So that's how typical CRM are built, and uh, including Salesforce, right? But we see a big difference to building materials where you know, it starts with any one contractor contact, contacting distributor, asking for inquiry, and then, you know, distributor company will ask you as building material to get quotes or information about products. And so it goes on with the next contractor asking the next distributor company and that's asking the same building material about inquiring quotes. And it goes on and on, right? So the thing is, we are not looking at one single opportunity, like one single prospect for one project. That's a huge, massive difference we will see here. Because what would the typical CRM friend are doing is they will create for every inquiry, one opportunity. But as you know, it doesn't matter which company at the end wins the deal, right? Which distributor doesn't matter. Your goal is to, inst to get your product installed in a certain project in a commercial business. So that's what we are talking about. And as you know already, uh, our job as building material sales rep is not only babysitting the distributors, right? Which is also important, of course, but it is much more valuable, more efficient if we work on the specifiers, on the architects, and on GC and contractors to make to make them your fans. So being specified, like, you know, that's your product being specified means the contract will hopefully buy your product through your distributors. So that's the goal. And that's also what we identify in our building materials space in Germany. And it's the same um, as in US as we just have discussed already. So what are the main industry challenges we are, we, we, we face in the market, what we understood from our customers, and we will see then how we solve those, ch those challenges. Like what we saw earlier, the, the sales process itself of building materials is not compatible with the standard CRM. That's the biggest issue we have here because we have not single, we have one project, but multiple prospects, right? But only one single deal will be closed at the end of the day. And then as, um, as you know, Project identification, you know, if somebody names it like, hey, I have a project in Las Vegas. And the next one will be like, hey, I have a five-star hotel somewhere in Nevada. So the people can name the, diff the, the project differently. And it's about like, how can I as a sales rep know, hey, these all informations are actually about this one, sim one single thing, but one single project. So we have sales rep, we have inside sales to ha automatically identify information, emails, um, to assign them to so one single project. But also um, we have really complex that cool landscape means on each stage of the project, you have different decision makers. So how can we cope with the different uh, decision makers with the right one at the right time, exactly what you mentioned earlier? The long sales cycle is also big challenge. Like, how can you make sure that you know tomorrow you're gonna work on a project where you contacted the specifiers two years ago, right? So you gotta make sure that you know the step you're gonna do every time in each single step of a project. Being specified, the most pain for all building materials. That's all we know, right? So now how how does Baucor actually try to solve these problems? Um, first thing is we do, I, that, I mean, mostly our com the companies using CRM, they, they know they're buying customers, the distributors, right? But they don't know, hey, which specifiers actually always against us? Like who is, who is always specifying products against us? That's the first thing, or maybe, which specifiers are specifying your products, but at the end of the day, your product is not being put in the project. So we, we automatically calculate the loyalty of each individual companies. Doesn't matter if it's a customer or not the customer. I'm talking about 
the building owners, investors, specifiers, GCs, contractors. So we do automatically qualify those companies. How loyal are they? And what's their performance? Performance means if you're talking about GC, how often are they like bidding in a single project or on projects, but how often did they really win the project? Like it doesn't matter if they use your product at the end of the day or use a competitive product, that's performance. And these two KPI can be used for each single, single sales rep to say like, hey, you know what? For next quarter, I will focus on companies with high performance, so they win a lot of bids, but they were not deciding for our product. So that's easy to find out. That's the first thing. And the second thing is based on different criteria, including the loyalty and performance of each single companies, we do automatically identify which project leads make sense that you work on. So like what you said, Mark, our asset as a sales rep is limited time. So we're going to focus on the right deal. So this is what both you do. And also we help the sales rep to understand what's the connection between all those companies. I'm talking about, hey, who, which building owners uh, working with which architect specifiers and who are the specifiers usually working with like which contractors, which GC, usually they give the, the orders to. And further on, like from the GC perspective, where did they buy the products through which distributors? And what you see here, the red arrow means is the broken link. Means if Yardley inserts was in a project, he decided previously to buy a competitive product from a distributor called Pacific Home. So, Based on this automatically generated diagram, based on your historical data, which will be generated automatically from Balcor, will help sales rep to understand which companies make sense that you work on on a project. And also, if you are if you are contacting those companies, you get directly visual image about how they usually work with and what you should improve and like what's your topic with them. How do you can make make them um, buy more of your products, maybe by selecting the right distributors or, you know, talking about pricing with the, with the distributors where the, the link was, was broken. This kind of thing is automatically generated by Balcor. And what we do also is we, you know, we, we have a lot of data, data everywhere. We are talking about data in your email inbox. We are talking about data from aggregators and also from your ERP, from the orders, from the quotes you have. Bulk or integrate those data and turning them into insights. So, for example, we have integration natively with data aggregators like Dutch, Barber, Ebout is more the European one, but US one would be Dutch data analytics. So where you can natively go into Salesforce, you search for your projects, search for um, your specifiers and get the projects they are working on, get them automatically into your Salesforce. That's one thing. The next thing is we also do updates on the data. Means if you get the project already in your system, the project live in your database. So if there is an update coming in, like new participants on the project or maybe new dates, like when the quote has to be sent out, this kind of thing, this will be automatically imported into your systems. So you don't have any manual work anymore. And by combining this external data from the aggregators with your internal data and your historical data, you have massive, massive um, added value for the sales rep so that they can win more deals with less manual works. And again, time is the asset. That's first thing. And the second thing is, how do I know what do I have to do today? So what you see here on this screenshot is you have all your projects in each of the project stage. You have the potential volume. And also very important is you have this traffic light where you see red, yellow, or green, which tell each sales rep why is it red? If you click on the project, you'll see directly, oh, okay, this is red because, you know, hey, I don't get, I didn't get any inquiry yet, but I know that the project decision will be made like in three weeks from now. So very important, I need to do something. So the system, Balcor, will monitor all your projects automatically and give you the alarm 
if you have to do something, if you have to take an action today or next week, so it really depends on the adjustment, but we deliver best practices for building materials to help them, to help the sales reps basically, to understand what I have to do today to make sure I can hit my numbers. And, you know, guided by all this automation, we're also talking about how can we um, uh, help each sales rep. Again, our focus on Bocor is to help each sales rep. Of course, at the end of the day, it helps the bosses, it helps the sales manager to hit the numbers, but we provide functionalities to help each sales rep to do more efficient work and to get more of, our, of their pipeline. So one of the thing is we encourage the sales rep to help the specifiers by sending them spec text. This kind of processes is already built in into Salesforce. So you can build all your product hierarchy, put on your collaterals, your spec text into the system, and sales rep can easily go to a project or go to specifiers and select the products relevant for that project easily by checking, ticking the box. And an email will be automatically generated with the spec tags and attachments from the collaterals and sent out to specifiers. So this process will be automated and you can easily also integrate this process into your website to publish all the spec tags to get more leads for your products. Last but not least, very important for us, for our business, it's not only specifiers, we're talking about contractors. So. Um, what we do is we encourage sales reps to say, hey, if you speak with your specifiers, if you speak about the uh, about, about the project, make sure that they know who are the best contractors they should include in the projects. So we have a process in created called contractor recommendation, where you can so sales rep can select the uh, contractors in the area of the project. They will see several KPIs like the loyalty and the performance and easily ticking the box and it will create a nice email for the specifiers that they know, okay, these are the best contractors I should include into my project for the best result of the project. That's the one side of the thing. The other side is the process. You can also say, I would like to inform the GCs or the contractors, hey, you were recommended. I would like to work with you together to win the projects. So they will get an email and optionally, you can provide them with an access to, the, to your system through your portal. If they click the link, they see certain data of the projects, they can work with you together to win the projects. So that way we enable you to increase the winning rate by recommending the right contractors into the right projects, but also, to increase the loyalty of your contractors to your brand because you try to help them generate new pipeline by recommending them into those projects. So this is like short brief overview about what we do end to end from lead gen, project lead generation until winning projects. Thanks, Mark. Donnie. Yeah, Donnie, what you, um, uh, yeah, we, you yeah, have a couple of last things there. Yeah, you were going to say. Or just right. uh, so, summarize those up because then we have a, some questions, some good questions from a couple of people I want to go over with you. Great, great. So if you're talking about pricing, what does it cost? 59 US dollars per use per month for Salesforce users. But for non-Salesforce users, it will include Salesforce licenses. Uh, it will be 99 US dollars per user per month, including everything. There will be no setup fee for this year. Um, and the next step will be just go to our website, app, and book an appointment with us. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Donnie. Uh, can you stop sharing? We can go back and see your sure. pretty face. Great. Um, so we got uh, two questions here. Um, uh, one, I, I'm hope from from Stephen. I hope we've answered was how do you view the building owner in the process? Well, I'm going to first of all speak. I'm I'm a big proponent today of uh, I've never seen the owners as being more educated than they are today. Um, Yes, we still have uh, um, owners who, I'll say owner developers who want to build something and flip it, and they don't really care uh, about, uh, they just want to, you know, the building to be saleable and uh, uh, 
but more and more builders that's going to say operate their facilities and so forth. You know, they really are knowledgeable about what's in there. And the owner is very, very important. And I tell many companies, like if you're having trouble um, getting specifications and getting those specifications not to be value engineered out that you should be spending time with the owner. Um, so Donnie, any other comments you might have on uh, the uh, Balcor and the role of the owner? Exactly. I see the same way as you, Mark. So that's the thing. What we do is mostly if, you, if I see from my customers experience what they do with the building owners, um, we're talking about the uh, bigger investors like hotels, owners like hotels, developers. They are important so that you understand what's the relationship between those companies where, where you know, which GC they're working with and which uh, architect specifiers are working with and what was the decision, like which product was used for them, like to understand the loyalty of those building owners towards your products. This is what we do mostly and doing more marketing from a marketing perspective to these building owners. Okay, good. And the next question is one uh, definitely for you, Donnie, and that's from Jorge. It says, uh, that's a hell of a lot of data that needs to be integrated. Does Balcor offer market databases, how updated is the data? So in other words, my understanding is you're not doing that, but you're linking to the ones like Dodge or Construct Connect or whatever things they're already subscribing to, you're using their tools, correct? Exactly, so we rely on the aggregator, how they deliver the data, mostly they are pretty good, so we rely on the data. We do not offer market database. Okay. So hopefully, uh, Stephen, and Jorge, hopefully that answered your questions. Uh, we have another question here. Is Balcor simply an add-on to your existing CRM? If so, is it uh, compatible with Microsoft Dynamics CRM? Great question. So we do have this a lot. So for those folks who are, have like a company group decision for one single CRM, we do provide Balcor as a standalone solution, which can be easily integrated into your dynamic CRM as well. Okay, so so it can, um, uh, so I just wanna make sure I was a little confused there. So if, um, if I have a different, a non-Salesforce CRM, um, and I wanna, I like it, I wanna stay with it, I can still use Balcor. Um, exactly. I don't, okay, good. Exactly. Um, all right, well, uh, any other questions from anybody? If so, um, just uh, type them in the chat box there and, and let us know. This is, uh, uh, this is Donnie, I just keep going back to the, the most valuable thing that the company has. I mean, they, if the company's looking at resources, I have salespeople. Um, uh, oh, let's see. Stephen is asking, do you have any connection to CoStar data? I'm not familiar with CoStar. Donnie, are you? Yeah, I'm not familiar. I'm just researching it. So it's apparently the CoStar.com, commercial real estate market analytics. Uh, if so, I think we're going to talk one-to-one -one about what's exactly the use case. And then, yeah, I can come back to you, Stephen. Because nor normally, I think what is like the, I know with Dodge and so forth, you've just connected with their API through their exactly. subscriber and, and the data goes right through. So I think that should not be a problem. Uh, question here from uh, Shannon. Um, do they offering, oh, that Donnie, good question. Do you offer continuing support after installation? Right, so you get support as long as you subscribe to our, to our products and for free. There is no additional cost for support, Shannon. Okay, good. Shannon, hopefully that, that answered your question. Um, the, uh, anyway, back, back to my point is I just see, um, based on what you've shared with me and what I've heard from the, uh, your, your current clients, you know, just this, I just see the ability of the s s company that a sales rep is a very expensive resource to have, and you want to use that resource as best as you can. And, um, and then salespeople themselves, their own performance, you know, they want to say, gee, you know, I only have so many hours a week. Who do I, right. who should I be calling on this week? Um, uh, what should I be saying? Or, you know, what, which project should I be focused on? All of those things are, um, uh, are so important. It seems to me that Balcor helps to really uh, simplify that. Right. Good. 
Okay. Well, um, uh, so I, anyway, I hope, hopefully this has been helpful and edu informative and educational to you. Um, I like to, I'm always looking for, you know, I'm always seeing problems all the time and uh, sometimes before other people see them or, or I see them as a bigger deal maybe than other people do. But, uh, uh, and then I try to go, how can we solve this problem? And, uh, and so, man, this CRM integration has just been a, it's been a tough one to me. And, uh, and when I came, met Donnie and learned more about Balcor and their desire to, you know, they're starting to come in the United States now and have signed up their first few clients. Um, I went, wow, I, I want uh, people to know about this because this may be, this may be a good solution uh, for your company. At least on the, it makes sense to me to at least take a look at it. So I encourage you to uh, uh, reach out to, uh, to Donnie at Balcor and, and have a further discussion with him about your particular situation. So if there's uh, not any other questions, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Donnie, have a great day. And um, hopefully we'll see you in a future webinar. Take care. Bye now. Bye. Bye.